The film opens with the introduction of Andre Davis, a proficient NIPD homicide detective deeply committed to his career. Tragically, at the young age of 13, Andre experienced the loss of his father, also a police officer, in a line-of-duty incident. During an ambush by three assailants, his father heroically subdued two before succumbing to the third attacker. Nineteen years have swiftly passed, and Andre has now established himself as a formidable force in tracking down and eliminating cop killers, with eight taken down in his nine-year career. Although frequently summoned for mandatory investigations by internal affairs, particularly regarding his most recent shooting incident, Andre has consistently been exonerated of any misconduct. When he's not on the job, Andre devotes himself to caring for his mother, Bonetta Davis, who has dementia and occasionally confuses Andre with her deceased husband. While Andre doesn't openly express regret or embrace the reputation he's garnered, he takes solace in his consistent exoneration, viewing himself as a steadfast upholder of justice. One night in Manhattan, two petty criminals, Michael Trujillo and Ray Jackson, plan to rob a wine shop, aiming to steal 30 kilograms of cocaine. They hold the shop owner hostage upon arrival, only to discover that the stash is unexpectedly huge at 300 kilograms, 10 times their initial estimate. While Ray is thrilled about this unexpected windfall, Michael is apprehensive, understanding that they're now dealing with a major player's goods. Ignoring Michael's worries, Ray begins packing the drugs. Their haste is suddenly interrupted by the sound of police officers outside the shop. Michael and Ray see NIPD officers gathering at the front and then knocking on the door. When the officers notice the cocaine on the floor, two of them burst into the shop. In the ensuing chaos, Ray eliminates these two officers while Michael takes the life of the store owner. Another pair of officers enter from the back. One is instantly shot and Ray, using his semi-automatic, suppresses the other. The surviving officer makes a call for backup but is knocked unconscious when he tries to peek out. In a frantic move, Michael and Ray dash outside, load the drugs into their trunk and speed away. However, they soon find themselves trapped by a police car. Reacting quickly, Ray leans out of their car and fires through the window of the police vehicle, fatally wounding the officers inside. Another two officers are at the scene, and as a woman steps out, she is shot by Ray once again. The other officer begins firing, which causes both Ray and Michael to seek cover. Ray then sneaks behind and finishes him off. They then move the cop car out of the way and speed off. Detective Onder is assigned to work the case and receives a briefing from Captain McKenna of the 85th Precinct. Several officers are guarding the scene from the 85th Precinct, who are grieving the loss of their fellow officers. The whole scene is a catastrophe, from ambulance to police, narcotics, and detectives. Captain McKenna, recognizing the gravity of the situation, tasks Detective Andre with the mission to apprehend the criminals responsible for the heist, emphasizing the need for Andre's skilled approach. The complexity of the case, especially the large quantity of drugs involved, necessitates Andre to collaborate with Detective Frankie from the Narcotics Division. Despite Andre's reluctance, Captain McKenna insists that this partnership is non-negotiable and crucial for the investigation. Meanwhile, the robbers seek a secluded spot to reassess their situation. There, Michael confronts Ray for his reckless decision to eliminate seven police officers, criticizing him for not only engaging in the killings but also for shooting those who were already subdued. Ray's actions have inadvertently condemned them to a life on the run. Desperate for a way out, they connect with their associate, Toriano Bush, demanding a bigger cut from the deal, hoping it will fund their escape from the city. At the crime scene, Andre deduces that the robbers were ill-prepared for the vast amount of 300 kilos they stumbled upon. They only managed to abscond with 50 packs, using a small BMW and just two people for the haste. Soon, the FBI arrives, assuming control over the investigation, a move that both Andre and McKenna resist. Andre, understanding the logistical challenge of moving such a significant haul quickly, theorizes that the drugs are likely to be sold within Manhattan before the break of day. He proposes a radical plan to completely lock down the city with the stipulation that the suspects must be apprehended by 5 a.m. Police Deputy Chief Spencer, keen on keeping Andre involved in the case, endorses this idea and agrees to present it to the mayor. Subsequently, the FBI consents to close all 21 bridges leading into Manhattan until 5 a.m. sharp. This comprehensive lockdown entails stopping all transportation in and out of the city, patrolling the waterways, blocking all four tunnels, and suspending train and subway operations, all to ensure the capture of the suspects. Meanwhile, Bush escorts Michael and Ray to meet with the buyer, Hawk Tyler. Hawk initially dismisses their demand for more money, but Michael has already calculated the profit potential. The 50 kilos they took will become 200 by the time they hit the streets, with an average street value of $332,000 per unit, totaling almost $6.5 million. 
With this in mind, Michael's demand of $1 million seems reasonable and Hawk agrees to the deal. He then introduces them to Adi, a trusted cleaner who can launder their money through offshore accounts and provide them with new identities and travel documents. A breakthrough in the case occurs when a photo surfaces showing Michael and Ray running a red light. The vehicle's registration leads them to Bush. During a raid at Bush's residence, they encounter Yolanda Bell. While she hasn't seen Bush recently, she recognizes Ray and Michael from the traffic camera images. Ray's background is troubled, having enlisted in the army alongside Michael's older brother, Arvel. Michael, initially a promising and intelligent youth, left college to join the army following Argyll's death in Afghanistan. His military career ended abruptly with a dishonorable discharge after he assaulted his commanding officer. While at Adi's house, they learn from a news report that the entire island is under lockdown. Meanwhile, Bush turns up at a lounge that is being monitored by the police. However, before Andre can reach the scene, Sergeant Butchko of the 85th Precinct takes matters into his own hands and avenges the death of his fellow officers by killing Bush at the bar. Andre soon arrives at the scene and finds out that their only lead has been killed, and a weapon was likely planted on him after the fact, as evidenced by the empty ankle holster of Sergeant Butchko. Andre confronts the surgeon about the shooting, and the argument escalates until Butchko shoves Andre in frustration, resulting in a punch to the face. Back at Adi's condo, a transfer of $326,000 is made to offshore accounts using new false names for Ray and Michael. The remaining balance will be paid in cash upon their arrival in Miami, where they are instructed to travel by motor bus. The discussion is abruptly cut short by the arrival of a police team led by Lieutenant Kelly, who forcibly enters Adi's reinforced steel door. The ensuing gunfight leaves Adi mortally wounded, but before he passes, he gives Michael two flash drives from his computer and the password to access them. Ander, curious about how Adi's condo was located so quickly, makes his way there from the lounge. Upon arrival, he spots Michael and Ray, who have just barely escaped out the window in a nearby kitchen. Ray insists that they split up as he has sustained a gunshot wound to his midsection, and staying together would make them too easy to track. Ander identifies himself as a kitchen worker who nods toward Ray's location. Too injured to keep running, Ray anxiously sits in a doorway where he mistakenly shoots a bystander. Before Andre takes him out amidst the cold, meaty surroundings, Michael sneaks up on Frankie disarming her with the butt of his gun and using her as a shield. Frankie implores Andre to take the shot, even though it puts her in harm's way. However, Andre chooses not to act, he attempts to persuade Michael by recalling his military history and his brother Arvel's distinguished service. Andre emphasizes that it is Ray, not Michael, who is responsible for the violence and this strikes a chord with Michael, leading him to express doubts about various questionable incidents. Michael retreats into the meat locker and frees Frankie, securing the door behind him with a screwdriver. He escapes on foot and Frankie yells at Ander for not taking the shot. Michael takes refuge at the nearby Parallax Hotel, where he holds a person hostage in his room and knocks him out to use his laptop. Michael uses the password Adi gave him to access the flash drive and quickly realizes that the 85th Precinct is involved in trafficking drugs. The files show details of each corrupt officer by their badge number. Finally understanding what he walked into, Michael transforms his appearance with a clean shave and an acquired outfit. However, he is forced to pause at the hotel lobby as police officers arrive. He changes his route through the kitchen but is discovered, leading to another pursuit. While trying to escape, Michael accidentally crosses in front of a vehicle and is thrown to the ground. He quickly gets up and leaves his bag of money behind, but is safe from being shot by Andre's intervention. As the break of dawn approaches, the subway stations begin to reopen, and Michael moves underground, where he is trapped on a train. A standoff occurs, but Andre convinces Michael to surrender by guaranteeing his safety. This promise is credible to Michael because Andre is the only police officer who talks first and shoots second. Just as Michael lowers his weapon and hands it over, he is shot from behind by Frankie, who mistakenly believes Andre is in danger. She contacts dispatch and reports the shooting, and as Michael takes his final breaths, he whispers the password to Andre and hands over the flash drives. Afterward, Frankie and Andre return to their fellow officers, who commend them for their performance. However, Andre becomes increasingly suspicious and uses Frankie's phone to uncover that she had contacted Lieutenant Kelly just before the raid on Addie's condo. The following morning, Manhattan returns to its usual activity. Captain McKenna comes home to find Andre waiting for him with a gun in hand. McKenna already knows the reason for Andre's visit. After accessing the drives, Andre realizes that the 85th Precinct was serving as armed protection for a high-level drug dealer, and the events from the previous night were just a case of misfortune. When the wine store was robbed, Adi was easily located because he was the same cleaner that McKenna used to launder his money. 
Unapologetic McKenna explains that it was never about MCS or Rolexes but about low wages for a job that often leads to officer deaths and can cause depression, broken marriages, and a poor quality of life. Ander, who grew up in a law enforcement family and experienced the loss of his father, is deeply affected by these words. Still, he refuses to abandon his duties. At that moment, officers from the 85th precinct are seen moving outside the house before they begin firing. Ander successfully eliminates all of them, including McKenna, who refuses to surrender even after being severely injured. Frankie confronts Ander from behind, aiming a gun at him and insisting on getting the flash drives. Ander, however, tells her it's already too late, the drives have been copied, and harming him would only lead to her imprisonment and leave her daughter motherless. His words deeply affect Frankie, leading her to give up her badge and submit to arrest emotionally. Following this, a scene shows Ander driving over the Manhattan Bridge, the crucial flash drive marked with bloodstains still in his possession.